When you hear the word change, what comes to your mind? For others, it's about thinking of the world and how it can be better. That is true. But I believe change is not just the result, but rather the remainder of what's left. So join me as I take you through the thought process of a rugby player who in the bid to share an experience ended up realizing change and co-founding a rugby team. As we move along the conversation, I would like you to keep it at the back of your mind that I believe change is a process. And therefore, for each process, there are stages to it. I believe for change, there are events or experiences that inspire one to seek change. Therefore, the first stage is the inspiration for change. In 2015, I completed my high school education. In 2016, I did all things rugby. I played rugby. I coached rugby. I even tried my hand at officiating. And the experience of feeling that adrenaline going through my veins, of me catching the ball, passing the ball, and hitting those hard tackles made me want to share my experience. Hence my disappointment when I came to UCT in 2017 and I realized there was no women's rugby in the university. I thought to myself, the next best thing was to join the Leo Marquardt Hall rugby team. It was a men's team, but I took it as an opportunity to train and possibly get game time. As you can see from the picture, I was the only woman in the team. It became apparent as time moved by that I was never going to get any game time. I started entertaining the idea of starting my own rugby team. And Christine Gureza, one of my friends, advised me and accompanied me to the sports admin office. And the lady at reception said, and I quote, we've, start, we've tried starting this team. The ladies are just not interested. Once we start the team, it eventually dies within two or three weeks. My heart was pierced, but I thought to myself, my passion will never let me down. Having realized my inspiration for change, I thought to myself, I now need to be able to sustain my idea of change. And for me to be able to do that, I need to nurture the love for this idea in my potential teammates. With this in mind, I took a pen and a paper and I walked into the res dining hall and asked my res mates who wants to join a rugby team. Mind you, when I was thinking about this, I thought people were going to come through and people were going to sign up and we were going to start a team. However, reality hit me when I only got two, if not three, signups. I thought to myself, why not make use of the available resources? By available resources, I mean my friends. I approached my friends and I asked them, would you guys want to come through and sign up? And you can drop out when I do have numbers. They said, it's fine. In that box, check. I approached the Leo Marquard Hall sports rep and I asked him, may I please have the equipment um, so that I can use with the available ladies for training? He said, it's fine. Anyway, you're one of the guys. So that box, check. At that moment, I was excited. I was elated. As we're moving, as it seemed like we're moving forward, but that's where the hard work started. As you can see from the picture, this was our first practice session. We had five, not six individuals, including my friends, down for practice. I was happy, but eventually I started thinking we need to have games. We need to participate in tournaments. We need the university to be on board. That's where passion meets effort. In 2018, we had new students coming through to the university, and I informed the rest of the house. We have a women's rugby team starting up. Please do come down for training. We got a few first years coming down and the numbers were getting up. We had 12 players. But at that time, I thought we still need the university to come on board. Fast forward to 2019, we were lucky enough that the rugby club came on board and we were able to get people signing up during orientation week. And lastly, I never had to, finally, I never had to beg people to come through and sign up. We're just like any of the sporting codes. My role at that point had changed. As you can look, as you can see from the picture, we had state-of-the-art kit. We, we even had the best coach in the Western province. My role as a pioneer had changed. I was now the captain of the team. And I had the support 
of my vice captain who also happened to be my friend. At this point, I started embracing my change. And with this level, I had to allow people to help me, having had my inspiration. And me trying to sustain the idea, I now had to embrace my idea of change. As we're moving forward through the year, I had to make sure that each and every teammate that went, came through the team understood what rugby was all about. They understood the, na they understood the nature and how I loved the sport. However, I kept on getting questions from my fellow students and they asked me, why don't we know you? We've never even heard about you. And that's when it dawned to me that when people think of change, they're associated with celebration and recognition. But I believe honest and honest change has to come when no one is watching. You need to want the change even when no one is applauding, even when no one is willing to say, well done. Eventually in 2019, I got some form of recognition. As you can see from the pictures, I even got a selfie with the vice chancellor. I even got a trophy as one of the best leaders in the rugby club. Celebration and recognition are the last on my list. After everything is said and done, I would want you to remember that change is not just a result, but rather the remainder of what's left, where you've put your passion and your effort. And after getting the inspiration to seek the change, may you be empowered to sustain your idea of change whilst allowing people to embrace your change with you. And for celebration and recognition, even if the world seems not to celebrate or recognize you, may you be able to celebrate and recognize yourself.